This is a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's not about how much money you make in a, a year or five years or 10 years. I'm not easily impressed with that. Uh, it's about how much money you take with you when you walk off the trading floor. So the way I've adapted that is, you know, it's not, I'm not easily impressed with what somebody makes in a year or five years or 10 years as a trader. The only true measure of success is what you take with you when you're done trading for active income. Welcome to the AlphaMind Podcast with me, Stephen Goldstein, and my co-host, Mark Randall, where we discuss matters related to trading psychology, trading behavior, trading mindset, and so much more. Welcome to the second part of our fantastic interview with veteran futures trader, Matt Pax Kenner, a future trader's story. Firstly, thank you to our two podcast sponsors, without whose support this podcast would not be possible, and who we are extremely proud to be associated with. Our first sponsor is TradeStation International Limited. Clients of TradeStation International can use the outstanding TradeStation global multi-asset trading platform with access to international markets and where you can leverage their superb professional grade tools developed over many decades, such as Radar Screen, The Matrix, and easy language, an intuitive coding language for traders. And with TradeStation, there are no hidden price spreads, just transparent, low commissions. To find out more about opening an account, visit tradestation-international.com forward slash alpha mind, or go to our website alpha-mind.net, or see the link in the episode description. TradeStation International Limited is authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority in the UK and acts as an introducing broker to Interactive Brokers UK Limited. TradeStation International Limited does not provide investment advice or trading recommendations. Trading in financial products involves risk. You could lose more than your initial investment. Our second podcast sponsor is the Society of Technical Analysts, the STA. The STA provide world beating technical analysis education and outstanding membership services, including regular meetings, conferences, and support material for their members. I personally have been a member of the STA for many years and also lecture on their fantastic diploma program. This program is also offered in a home study course form and Alpha my members can obtain a 10% discount on the cost of this fantastic home study course. We do highly recommend this if you really want to boost your understanding of technical analysis and how it can be used in markets. To find out more about this offer, go to our website alpha hyphen mind.net or see the link in the episode description now on with the podcast so we're going to go back into this conversation with matt pax kenner from last week as part two of this episode we're not going to go straight back into where we left off we're going to keep a bit of continuity going so we're just going to play the the last couple of minutes of the first part of that episode and then carry on from there. It, listen, I just want to say, Matt, um, first of all, thank you. I mean, that, that half an hour and, and the chat you've had with Mark since then has been uh, been incredible. And, I, you know, I, I, I think every single trader should listen to your 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 first, you know, to, to this podcast, hopefully the whole thing. But at least that first 30 minutes from you, because, you know, I, I, I heard every single trader's story there in 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 your story hmm. you know it's 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 a story that's that's timeless you know you can go back to the stories from uh from jesse livermore's time and you know there was a, there was a lot of elements of that there from the traders who started in the 70s you know you, you you in a sense were a child of the 90s when it comes to trading um you know and i, I know a lot of people now who, who are you know, started at that time. And uh, at the moment, they're trying to find a way, a lot of them, you know, some of them are still within it, some have walked away. And and then I think it's, it's going to be really interesting for the, the, the traders of the last few years who have started. Um, and quite a few of them are going through a bit of shock now. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's, they've never seen a bear market. They've, they've never experienced anything like this. Um, it, you know, for a, few years it looked like all you did was was buy and hold or you know buy and shut your eyes and buy some more um and, and they're, uh-huh. they're going to be telling similar stories 20 years from now to the story you told and then there'll be a different spin on it there's no flaws anymore 
you know, they'll be starting in different ways, but it, it, it's the same story. And, you know, I was, I, I was really moved hearing it. You know, at times I got really emotional, you know, hearing some of the things you said, I, you know, I recognized my own story in there. Um, but it, I mean, it felt like, a, I know it's going to sound ridiculous, but it, there was redemption in there as well. And as someone who's religious, you know, it, I mean, that, I, I just want to sort of put that in there. You know, how, how did your religious side, that spirituality that you obviously have, how did that, did that play a part in, in getting you through that? Yeah, a, a, a huge part. You know, um, there was, when I, when the, the two things that I was trying to do was, was, you know, look at, look, look at two different aspects of my life, both on the floor and off the floor when I was trying to, you know, create a way of, of living, uh, that would ultimately transfer over into trading, you know, and without sounding like a too, too cliche ish, trying to be the best version of myself constantly. And part of that was going back to my years in the seminary from 93 to 96. Um, and like I said earlier, having, having a, a, a structured day built around something meaningful beyond me built, built around something that was more than me. And, um, uh, uh, you know, my, my God and, and, and having that the, the waking up at five, five o'clock in the morning, showering morning prayer at five 30 uh, mass at six o'clock breakfast afterwards, study class, homework, evening prayer, rosary, night prayer, bed, you know, that, 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 uh, that structure and built around something greater than me, uh, helped me be happier and more well-adjusted than I had been uh, in, uh, in uh, up to that point in my young life. And then, uh, of course, you know, trading, opening range, you know, my, my, my technical work and all of those things, how do I adapt that onto the screen? So I, I, I brought those two, the personal and the spiritual and the, uh, uh, the practical into, into my life again, very slowly. You know, I started to wake up every morning at 445. The first thing I do is, is I pray or I meditate. And then I do some, some breathing exercises and then I do some yoga and then I come down this, you know, I'm up an hour, hour and 15 minutes before I even look at the markets and, you know, and, and, um, knowing, knowing that there was something greater than me that loved me when I struggled to love myself it personified in my wife who loved, you know, I mean, I, honest to God, Steve, I mean it. She should have, the, the, the kind of chaos that I created in our lives, you know, my, in the life of my family after MF Global was, was unbelievable. She, she should have, she should have taken off. And the reason I think that she didn't, well, I know because she loved me and she knew what I was capable of. Even when I didn't, she knew that we'd be okay. Even if I didn't. So putting those two things together and, and, and not, not, not asking for it to go away, you know, not, not asking for the, you know, that miracle, right? It was, you know, God, give me the miracle to be able to make this all go away, make it all better. The, the miracle was found in, 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 in very small little things in my life. The miracle was found in waking up at the same time every morning, putting that, putting that uh, 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 schedule into my life and, 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 and creating, creating, rules and guidelines around my trading that I stick to, you know, and, and that I live within, because I know that if I, if I leave them again, weaknesses are doing pushups, waiting to pounce on me. And, and all, all of those things just really kind of, you know, the, the, the miracle developed kind of one step at a time, one trade at a time, or, or, you know, building my, building my, my career, you know, on a solid, solid on a solid foundation. One trade at a time, one brick at a time. And in, in, in my mind, it, that makes it's a good uh, illustration. You know, one brick at a time was one trade at a time. Before you know it, I've got a solid foundation and a solid, solid building that's not going to shake. And, and the cement in that is my faith in God and, and, and therefore my faith in myself. Yeah, so that's, oh, that's, that's, that, that's, that's fantastic. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm sort of listening to you and I'm thinking, you know what, what? What's the question people would be asking if they were listening uh, to you today? And um, or, or what would a younger me be asking? Because you know, I, I you know, when I was a trader, probably in the nineties, I, I used to ask, what, "What is the clue here? What, what, what is what is the answer?" And you know, you said something quite interesting about you know people want to know what Pax is doing. People want to know what this one is doing. People want to know 
who's buying and who's selling. And, and that's, of course, always important. You need market intelligence. You need to understand what's going out there. But, it, you know, as, as I'm getting from you and, and, and the thing which I think a lot of people don't realise, and, you know, I didn't realise when I, when I was a young trader, was that actually it's what's in you that, you know, that, that that's what matters. That That's where it springs from, you know, because 100%. even if if you're doing well, you know, it's nice. The market is giving you a gift. But it, if you think that's just your genius that's doing that and you're not going deeper into your meaning as a person and you're not attending to that. Yeah. And you're not being humble. You're not realizing that, you know, at the moment, you know, the sun is shining on you, but you know, there may be luck involved. You know, you just may have struck upon a system or a chord or a period in the market that's working well. And it's not always going to be like that. And and you're going to need that inner strength when it's not, you're going to need that humility. You know, you said something at the very beginning, um, you know, even before we started, you know, when we were chatting about you've made every single mistake a trader can make in the market. And, you know, people assume that the, the, the longer you spend in this job, that somehow mistakes eventually stop happening. They don't, that they always happen and they keep happening because because of the, the environment that we're dealing with and the uncertainty that we're facing and, and the way the human mind works and, and that. But actually, it, it's not always about not making mistakes. It's about realizing faster and quicker that you're making right. them and having, having a kind of structure and a strategy to get away from that and to then get back, get back into it without those mistakes doing too much damage so that when you get things right, you're going to thrive. It's absolutely right. Yeah, right. Exactly. I still, I still have bad days. I still have rough days, you know, but my rough days are not nearly as severe and, and, and they're not nearly as frequent when they happen and they do happen. They're less and less, you know, they're, they're, they're just not as impactful as what they used to be, but they're still impactful on my mindset. And I still have to be careful of how I allow them to affect me. I have to forgive myself for the mistakes I make. And I have to be able to be willing to, you know, be forward looking. Right. That's why, like, I, I don't, people ask me about losing money. I, I don't lose money. I, I spend money. I, you know, because if, if I think of money lost, that's, that's, that's naturally you know, uh, focused on the past. I, I, I don't want to be focused on the past. I want to be forward thinking. So I have expenses. And I'm willing to spend money in the market because that that's keeping me focused on the next trade so that I can forgive myself for the mistakes that I made and I can continue to focus on that next trade because that's how I build my building, right? That 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 visual that I have in my mind of, of that solid foundation, one brick at a time. If I'm focused on that last brick that maybe I broke and I'm staring at that brick and I'm analyzing that broken brick, you know, what, what, what am I missing that's in front of me? You know, if I if I'm worrying about how I'm how I've hurt myself for the destruction that I've caused in my family, and if I'm if I'm thinking about all the pain that I caused, it, it, all I'm going to do is repeat that and create more. But if I'm willing to forgive myself and move on, then 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 I'm giving myself a chance, and I'm giving my family a chance. See that that see that, that message. That that's the bit that you need to know when you're young. It, it's behavioral mastery. You know, you're uh-huh. dealing with uncertainty. You cannot always be right. And you cannot not have moments where it goes against you because of the nature of what you're doing. You know, uh-huh. you know, our good friend, and he's been a guest to us on our show, Steve Ward, and he's, he's written some great books. I don't know if you know his books. Uh-huh. Um, he, he put a post up on uh, LinkedIn yesterday talking about behavioral risk. And the really important aspect that we have as humans is, you know, we can know how markets work. We can understand how markets work. OK, but we have to manage our own behavior. We have to manage how we as humans deal with the fallout from that uncertainty. Uh-huh. And, and, you know, when I read his post, I thought yeah, he's nailed it. You know, that that is it. It, it, and that's what myself and Mark are always talking about. And that was actually the original, you know, when we first talked about Alpha Mind all those years ago, Mark, about working on those areas. 
And I think I think Matt, or, or should we call you Pax or Matt? I'm still not sure. It doesn't matter. People call me Pax or Matt. It doesn't matter. Either one. We, we need to know where Pax came from. By the way, <laughs> at some point. I, I think it's important uh, also that the, the, the strength and power that you get as, as a human, a human quality here, of, of understanding and finding your noble purpose. You know, and, that, and having yeah. that as the backbone to then whatever you do, whether you want to be a trade, but your noble purpose, the the, 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 the sermon side of you, the wanting to help, the wanting to serve, the wanting to educate, it, it started off not in the trading world. That that was being founded in your in your your period of time when you were when you had your religious hat on and you're using that as your your purpose. But it still is to this day one one can tell really really important for you to have that purpose that continues to drive you. And that's a massive massive message for anybody getting involved in what is an absolute. SHIT show of trading because it's you know, it trading is. painful and it'll take you to places that are going to be very, very dark. And if you don't have any purpose that's your backbone, it'll be a tougher journey. Well, oh my gosh, I, 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 I couldn't have said it better. Yeah, and that, that actually, you know, brought to mind, Stephen just asked me where PACs came from. Um, when you know on the floor you guys remember we had acronyms and that's how we recorded each other's trades and and uh, uh, my initials every people use their initials or or some version of their name um, uh, my initials were taken so uh, I thought all right I want something that means something and 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 I thought okay I, I I just went back and I looked over some Latin words from the seminary and Pax came to mind and I liked it and it had a ring to it and it was something that people can write down it means peace in Latin. Pax is peace in Latin, and I thought that that would that was that that was a good um, uh, symbol or indication as to what my backbone is was and is, and you know when when I started to when I started to believe the hype, Ira Harris would always warn me about believing the you know don't 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 buy into the hype. When I started to believe, like you said earlier, Steve, I'm a great trader. Look how big I am. I'm. 10% of the, the NASDAQ volume, I'm, wow. One lot traders were making more money than me, by the way. Guys feeding off of my down ticks were making more money than me when I was 10% of the NASDAQ volume. But, you know, when I, or now, and this is a danger for me now with the big following on Twitter or, um, you know, and, and, and my trading group and, and things like that is, you know, I'm PAX. You know, I got to show everybody how to trade. I, you know, uh, when I start to believe the hype, is is when I when I when I leave that what my back I leave that spiritual backbone I leave that 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 uh, uh, the ability to forgive myself for the even the little mistakes that I make you know that I can that that I can become obsessive about and and I stop focusing on that next trade and now I'm now I'm digging myself a gigantic hole and it becomes dangerous it becomes very dangerous and I don't recognize it I don't see it until sometimes it's too late that that's the one thing I think that. If I can, if I can get across to 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 new traders, you know, traders that have started their career, like you're talking about, Steve, a few years ago, when it was all they had to do was buy and hold them, you know, uh, H O. How do they? What do they? What what do the kids call it nowadays? Hodl. 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 What, it all, was hodl. Hodl. Yeah. Hodl. All you do is just buy and hold, buy and hold, buy and hold. Okay, you know, now that buy and hold doesn't work anymore, now what do you do? What do you fall back on? what do you and that's mark mark that was a great point what you know what do you fall back on what's your backbone how are you going to survive those difficult times how are you going to survive those difficult days and how are you going to figure it out if there's and if there is one one thing that i can i can get across to traders in this conversation or not other conversations you know my 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 uh um on my Twitter page, I don't talk about levels very much and I don't talk about my opinion in the market very much and there, there's there's no shortage of that on Twitter but what I what I want to do is I want to give people hope that no matter how trading will bring you to, like you said, to the darkest places in the recesses of your soul. I've known too many traders that have lost their lives because of this business too young. We all have, whether they've taken their lives or they drank themselves to death or drug themselves to death or just, you know, lived under this gigantic veil of anxiety and stress that they, they, they wind up dying of cancer or heart disease. And I mean, I can't even count how many traders I know that have died in their 50s, 40s, and 50s? 
um, which is why it's so important that I take care of myself and that, that, that I do the things that I do. I, I need traders to know that there's hope, man. If I can do it twice, you can do it. And, and if I can do it well, more than twice, if I do it every, if, you know, the macro working, right. The macro working into the micro, the, the big working into the, to the narrow, if I can do it in a, in the larger sense, I do the same thing in the larger sense. I do it every single trade that I make. I do it every single day. You know, what I did in 2012, 13, 14, going up until now and rebuilding my career, I do that every single trade. You know, I, I stay focused on what's in front of me and I do it with hope. I do it with hope because there is hope. And this mark, this business will bring you to your knees. It will bring you to your knees. And that's when you're going to find out what kind of a person you are and what kind of a trader you are. Wow. Wow. Powerful, powerful, powerful words there, Matt. And I think, um, you know, the business can stink at times. You know, and I've, I've known 15 people under the age of 55 that are no longer here for all of those reasons you, you described. And a lot of them were, you know, from the floor, from, from the front line of trading, right. uh, be that a bank or whatever. Because if you don't manage yourself, or have respect for yourself and the impact on yourself of this stuff that comes your way. And if you, by the way, if you're trading and thinking, I've had no stuff come come my way yet, well, it's going to come. <laughs> guess, be, guess make sure you're prepared for it because if, you, if you're not, some seriously bad things can happen to your, not just your health, but the ecosystem of your family and friends that starts to fall apart, apart around you if you're just not paying attention to that. So it's really important that you've shared that story um because pe people need to recognize that they need to wake up to that you know but they think it's just sitting there trying to make money all day then you know good luck but if you get to 85 years of age and look back and say what have you done for 85 years and well i've, been, I've sat in front of this screen shouting at it trying to make money is your is your answer then well that's not a good use of 85 years of something really really precious so can i, can I just jump in there because you know that there's there's going to be a couple of different constituencies uh, in this audience who are hearing this and there, there'll be some who have you know who, who might be going through that kind of period where they're, they're doing really well they're making a lot of money and, and and maybe maybe they're on that journey somewhere where where there is that danger of you know of the ego coming in thinking it's going to last forever and and you start at some point you know, ju just treating everything like, uh, you know, like it, it's going to be a tap that's going to go on forever as as things change and that you've just maybe hit a little bit of a bad run. And it's really important to manage yourself through that and to sort of get in touch with yourself. But there'll be another community that are struggling, that they're, they're maybe making a bit of money. Maybe they're not making money yet. Maybe they're, they're on the upward curve still and they, they haven't hit those heights yet. And self-management is really important for them as well, because at some point it, it, it's about letting go yourself and trusting yourself and allowing yourself to make money. You oh. know, there's, you know, and I can see from the way you're nodding there that you're kind of recognizing that. So I'm going to hand over to you to see what you have to say about Jeez. that. I, I, I say that all I say that all the time, all the time. You've got to allow yourself. You've got to allow yourself to be involved in the market. You've got to allow yourself, allow yourself, allow yourself. Because too often we stop ourselves. You know, there's there's the, the way that I see things is is that there's there's you know like four different lanes of traders. There's the trader con consistently losing money. Then there's the break even trader, and I think we spend most of our time there. And then there's the consistently profitable trader, small. And then the traders that ultimately make you know. The, the, the two or three percent of traders that'll make seven figures or you know six figures anyway they make a living as traders um but during that journey something i wrote down you know when when i when i listened to you when i was listening to you steve was you know traders that are making a bunch of money now um and 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 they're they're starting to they're you know however they're experiencing however they're experiencing that and the traders that are struggling you know the one thing that came to mind is that this too shall pass you know, if right now you're making a ton of money, this too shall pass, dude. If you're struggling and you're and you you know you you've had some success, you've developed the process, you're learning, you're asking questions, you're listening, you know, 
and but you're still struggling, this too shall pass. If you've made millions of dollars trading whatever, this too shall pass. It'll get better. It'll get worse. It is what it is. It's an experience that we have to learn how to survive at, right? And 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 I think that the break-even trader, the trader that I think that's I think the break-even area is is the most difficult because I think that that trader has learned how to manage their risk. They haven't learned how to manage their profit yet, just the practical sense of it. Um, but they're learning how to manage themselves in it. And, 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 and that's, where, that's where we can snatch defeat out of the jaws of victory. Just as we're about to break through, we, you know, nah, I'm wasting too much time. This is too difficult. This is too hard. I'm not going to get it. And, and so you just give up on it, right? When really it's just another day, another experience of learning how to allow yourself to be involved in the market and to be, to be able to learn how to manage your profit to the right way. That is the most difficult thing. The, the first podcast I did when when I started uh, uh, kind of, you know, came out of the out of the shadows on Twitter was a Anthony Credelli had asked me to do a podcast. And I know I've known Anthony since we we're on the floor. And, and I mean, I've known Anthony 30 years since we were clerks. And Anthony had asked me to do his podcast. And he asked me what 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 was the most difficult thing that I had to that I struggled with as a trader. And immediately without thinking, I snapped back learning how to be successful or uh, no, not learning. Uh, what was the biggest thing you struggled with being successful? I didn't know how to be successful in, in the beginning part of my career. I was successful just because of, like I said, two great mentors, uh, a great trading process, right place at the right time. But I didn't know what being successful meant. Nobody in my family ever made that kind of money. Uh, I bought a Mercedes. I came home with a, with a, with, with my first new Mercedes in 2000 and my father, screamed at me. What's wrong with you? You could have bought us two Lincolns. Don't you know that they made tanks for the Nazis? That kind of shit. I mean, you know, I bought a lake house, my first lake house. And my mother gave me a, a framed copy of that, that, uh, that Bible quote. It's easier for a camel to sneak through an eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. I just bought a million and a half dollar lake house. And that's what she's given me as a housewarming gift. Feel guilty about this asshole. I mean, guy it was, it was, you know, it's just, that Irish Catholic guilt that I had to learn how to kind of work my way through. But on the screens, I had to learn how to let myself be successful again, too, because I'm a schmuck. Look what I've done. Look at the, 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 the problems that I've caused. Look what I've, you know, my two older kids have a home to go to. My three younger kids, you know, we're struggling here. I had to learn how to allow myself to be successful again. Going back to your point earlier, Steve, about, you know, just allowing yourself to. I had to allow myself to be and to become, we're all in a state of being and becoming. And I had to learn how to be so I can continue to become. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, that, that's incredible. And you know, as, as I was hearing you talk about that, you know, one of the things that occurred to me is, you know, that, that there's a lot of, uh, I suppose you could say people like us going to this job, you know, I, I think myself and Mark were both from similar backgrounds, um, you know, sort of working class roots, um, coming up into, you know, through the school system, the state school system. I talk about this with a lot of traders, you know, we, we didn't go to university. Um, most of my friends didn't go to university. You know, we went out and we got jobs and our fathers were, you know, taxi drivers and, you know, sort of in sort of similar sort of type roles or, or you know, the, the mums worked in an office. And, you know, that, that was where we and a lot of the people who were my peers were. And and I've met a lot of people who who quite rightly they don't know how to be successful, you know they feel guilty about making money because you know suddenly they're making more money in in a week than their parents were making sometimes you know in a year or even longer, and yeah. you know you, you, you th this kind of holds people back, and, and and again I've seen the different attitudes where I meet people from wealthy families who don't have those hangups, you know. <laughs> And and it plays out in their trading. It's almost like the self sabotaging comes right. from that somewhere. Yes, self sabotage is the biggest thing, in, in it? Yeah, and and where does that stem from, and why? We have to understand that. We have to know that. And and, and if we don't, we don't. You know, I I don't think that we have to have the answers to everything. I think that we just have to know that 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 these obstacles exist, you know, that, that, that whatever weaknesses are, whatever they are, are there. 
You know, whether you're from a wealthy family and you don't know how, how you're sabotaging yourself because of that weaknesses, or you're from working class backgrounds like us, and you don't know how, you know, you are holding yourself back. You're not allowing yourself to be and become. And, and if that's the case, then we, I don't think we have to have the answers to it. You know, as maybe Western pop psychology will tell us, we have to, we have to overcome. We just have to know that it exists so that we can protect ourselves from it and work around it. And then maybe we can overcome it, you know, given some time and given some effort and given some help. But I think it's important just to be able to recognize that these things do exist and how do they exist and how do they come up and bite me in the ass? Uh, there's, I don't remember where I heard this, but, you know, the, uh, 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 most traders can have the high and the low of the quarter and still lose money. The high and the low in advance in, in you know, I, here's, here's the high of the S&P, here's the low of the S&P, and you're still going to lose money. You know, why is that? It is, you can have a perfect, uh, uh, a, a perfect um, trading methodology, but you're still going to lose money. Why? You know, what, what is it that what is it that you're ignoring? And, 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 and I think more so in this day and age than in any other, especially with the advent of clients and, and traders at home on their own, you know, MacBooks thinking that they're clients. It's all about the math. It's all about the math. And it is. It's, it is those things. But it's more about what's inside of you and what you're bringing to the screens than it is anything else. And Mark said that earlier. I'm not going to be an 85-year-old man laying on my bed thinking, God, I wish I made more money. Gee, I wish I could take up one more S&P trade. What are you going to be thinking when you're an 85-year-old man, do you think? I, 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 God, God willing, I'll be thinking about how grateful I am for the journey that I've been able to walk. It's been a great journey, I should imagine, by then. I, I, I've had people say to me, you know, I, I love this job. You know, it's had some horrendous downs. It's had some great ups. But, you know, it, when I eventually meet the maker, my maker, they say, I hope I've got a keyboard with me still. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because they, they, they literally want to be buried with a keyboard at, at, at a Bloomberg terminal or something like that. Um, I've had a lot of people, and, and they love what they do. And actually, that's what gets you through in the end the really? passion for it because it, it, it is a you know it, it's a fantastically challenging job and it's exciting sometimes too exciting but you know it, it, it it's it's always interesting you know it, oh. it, 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 it no day is ever the same no challenge is ever the same no trade is ever the same no trade yeah apart from you you're you're the you are the perennial challenge that that's what you have to beat it's is why we say it's not the market you have to overcome, it's yourself. Uh, every trade. And that, that's why I can't, as long as my brain works and as long as I can click a mouse, I'll, I'll trade I'll, I'll trade until I can't. I, 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 I absolutely love this job. I tweet about that all the time. I love this job. And, and going back to something that both of you guys said earlier too, I wanted to mention this. Je, uh, my wife, Jen, had, I, I, I started the PAX group where I was mentoring traders and teaching traders my, my method and my process and, you know, and mentoring them. And um, I was complaining about how, God, you know, it's summertime. Yeah. You know, we belong to a club. I should be off playing golf and, and, or, you know, I wouldn't be here for the next month. If it she stop complaining, you get to do the two things you love the most. You get to trade and you get to influence people's lives. Go do it. You don't have to trade. Oh, yeah, you're right, honey. It's a good point. You know, it's, it's knowing it, it's, it's being our best selves, you know, the best version of ourselves. And, and, and now this is a cliche and everybody says it, but it is truly in that pursuit of being the best version of ourselves that we can be that, that ultimately gives life meaning and gives everything meaning, gives, gives everything gratitude. I got a little emotional when you asked me that question. I mean, I really did. Like my eyes welled up because I think about that. What, what, what will my life be like? You know, what, what, will, what will my kids be like? We, yesterday, you know, Thanksgiving, we were sitting around my brother's house and, and, and asking, you know, there's a card game with questions, you know, like it's just a game you play with your family. And uh, the question was, uh, when to a parent, to a child, uh, it, when, when, when I get older, will you allow, will the, the gist of it is, will you let me live with you and take, will you take care of me or will you put me in a nursing home? And my brother's kids both said, nursing home, you're going to the nursing home, dad. 
and and my three kids who the, my three younger kids were there and and they 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 all said and it was a different time so my my kids didn't hear my brothers could say this oh we'll take care of you dad oh we'll take care of you oh my gosh that made me so happy my brother said don't ask him that question you're not gonna like the answer <laughs> But it's, it's that sort of living that, you know, being open and being honest and, and listening and hearing and asking questions and being present. Yeah, you know, I, I, I remember one night in particular, going back to something Mark said, we're going, uh, uh, um, this is before I had a, my trading system, my trading computers and the screens behind me, I was trading on a laptop and I, uh, um, I, I was, I had a small position on overnight and I got that laptop on my chest. And every time I start to doze off, you know, or the, the screens dark and I pop up and refresh the mouse to keep the screens light, and, you know, as if me staring at the market is going to somehow affect that position. Um, what it did was keep me up all night long and kept my wife up all night long. So neither one of us slept well. So when the market was busy the next day, I was not present to it in order to be able to take advantage of it because I was sitting there staring at the market for my one lot. You know, it's it's learning how to properly work and properly manage ourselves in that environment that is ultimately going to give us the all of the good things that the market does have in store for us. You know, the, go ahead, Mark. I'm sorry. I was I was yeah. say that on that note. I, I I think that that just sums up what this chat's been about, really. That that, that fundamental thing that you just need to remember. That, yeah. it's, that, that, that time is more precious than money and and gear yourself up for that and get that backbone. But I, I guess, Steve, it's time to start uh, wind, winding winding up our, our podcast with, with, with Max. It's just been such an interesting discussion. Um, and, I, and I would say that if there are people out there that are having difficulties, it's been tough times, right? But if you are having difficulties, then then do go and speak to somebody. There are people out there that can help, right? Please. So just make Please. sure that um, you, you do that and you don't just take it on yourself to, to try to cope because some things, you know, can be so difficult that you do need to seek professional help. It's just important. I think we mentioned that. Um, but Crikey, there's so, so much to discuss and talk about and I, and, I, and I won't because I think it's been so clear during this, this podcast. But I, I, I want, I want to, sorry, Steve. Yeah, just, just before we wrap up, I, I want to just megaphone one thing, which I'm not sure we've necessarily raised enough. And it's something Matt said earlier on. And he, he kind of, he, he went there a few times, but we never gave it a name. It was self-compassion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it, it, this is a big thing that, is enormously important when you're doing this job you're on your own you know yeah. most of the time you're on your own even if you're in a trading room trading room with 100 other traders you're on your own especially when you get into those holes those lows and you know compassion from someone else can be really important at those moments but often it's missing or lacking and then it's when you don't have that because that is so helpful compassion is self-compassion the ability to turn around to yourself when you're at your lowest and remind yourself that you're not an idiot you're not a fool that you're good at this because that can get you out of those holes and i was hearing that a lot mm. in a lot of the things you said so i just wanted to raise that before we finished and, and maybe just ask you for a quick view on <laughs> the tapes that the, it, it, my, my father was um my father told me he was proud of me twice uh, once in eighth grade, when I finished the, 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 my, my first job as a busboy in a Greek restaurant on the south side of Chicago, and it took abuse from this guy all year. And he told me he was proud of me for that because I survived it. And I was just a kid. And the second time is when I backed my brother, Pat, to trade. And and um, um, and he was so I, I had been chasing that my whole life. And uh, I, I never felt good enough. I never felt like I pleased him. I never felt you know, like I said, the story, the anecdote I told you about buying my Mercedes and, you know, he made me feel guilty about that. He didn't make me. I mean, I did feel guilty about it. So when uh, the way that that transfers over is is um, uh, when I have a bad trade or I, I step out of my guidelines a little bit or or just, you know, just a bad trade in general, 
those tapes play in my mind. I'm not good enough. You know, you're an asshole. What's wrong with you? And, 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 and I've had to learn how to change that tape playing in my mind to you're an asshole. You know, what's wrong with you? You schmuck, you, you, you you're the worst to, okay. All right. That, that's what we do. It's part of the job. That's an expense. Take that expense, learn from it and let's move on. You know, or when I, if I step out of my rules and guidelines, which we all do from time to time, you know, recognize it, take a look at what's going on, forgive myself for it and move forward. And that way I can change the tapes playing in my mind to, 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 um, uh, to one of, you know, I am good enough. I am, I'm very good at this. You know, there's just, it's not always going to go my way. I need to move on from it and I need to keep building. That is self-compassion. And, and you know what it, it's it's often the hardest thing to do um you know and, and when you're feeling at that low point like you say everyone has that tape playing in their head everyone has that message from somewhere in their past that's being reinforced at those moments and and somehow you've got to just press the stop button on those tapes i guess younger yes. people are thinking what's a tape <laughs> YouTube video. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that tweet that keeps playing in your mind. Yeah, yeah, that tweet. But That's uh, funny. yeah, listen, listen. You know, where where can people find out more about you and your service and your mentoring and and the work you do? Uh, you can go. Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Pax Trader Seven Seven Seven. Um, I've got a website you can go to. It's called the PAX group, P A X group.org. So you can go to the PAX group.org. If you want to see what I do or, or learn a little bit more about me, then come in for a few days on a, on, on a trial and, and, you know, see, see what you think. I don't market, I don't market the group. I don't make my living from, from the PAX group. I, I, I derive a lot of meaning from it and it, and it helps help me to be a better trader. So I don't market it because I don't want it to become the next simpler trading. Uh, you know, I, I don't, it's a, we're, we're an intimate group of traders and some serious traders. I tweeted about one of them a few weeks ago that made $250,000, a trader that I mentor and, and, and uh, which he didn't do overnight, by the way, it took him two years to be able to work his way up to it, but he did do that. And the point is, is that, you know, you want to come in, you want to get to know what we do, please come in for a few days and, and, and take a look around. Terrific. It's terrific. terrific. PAX Group and PAX Trader 777. Mark. Fantastic. Well, let, let me guess leaders out of, of this. I think solid foundations, one brick at a time, you know, wow, that's, I guess, that's such a big message, you know, this noble purpose thing. But I want to, I'll get your tissues ready for a little bit now, Matt. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you with a little phrase, okay? Because this, this to me sums up this conversation, okay? So PAX has a meaning greater and deeper than that of a mnemonic of a pit trader. Huh. It's beautiful. And that's what this is all about. It's, it's not just you as a pit trader. It's that it's something a lot deeper and PAX just kind of sums it all up. So we appreciate you being on our show. God bless. It's been an absolute privilege. Thank you, Mark. Jesus Christ. I think the setting of Thanksgiving and just being with my family and things, you know, maybe set the tone for this. But this was an emotional conversation. This yeah. is an emotional thing. What we do is deeply personal. And what I do every day in, in my own trading, what I do with my family, what I do with my group, deeply personal. I put I put everything into it. So I, I appreciate that. I truly, truly do. I started to write it down, but then it, you know, started to resonate too too much with me so i'll, I'll listen to it again and, and yeah thank you no, it just had to be said it just had to be said because that wasn't obvious from the start it was just you know Pax the trader guy but we learned that it was more than that mm -hmm. there was something else and you just happened to tie these two things together and um that's that's powerful and that's where your powers are we, had to, we from, had to miss right? in the podcast because oh, we're still recording this, this is good. Should, should we keep this in? Sure. It's up, you want. It's, up to, it's up to you, Matt. I mean, it's, you know, you, you said some emotional stuff there and uh, it feel, feels really important for this podcast. 
Well, um, leave it in, sure. Brilliant. Okay. I mean, this is a lovely ending. You know, you know. Sometimes we we, we have the best part of the podcast after we finish talking, <laughs> and, oh, yeah. um, and we often we often say we we should add that back in. So it'd be really great if we could. Sure, absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, big message. And it's, it's, a great it's, been a lesson. it's been a lesson. It's not been a podcast. It's been a lesson for people. Well, I just listened to that first 30 minutes and I didn't want you to stop. You Normally we, we would jump in after five minutes, but it was just like, wow. Who would have guessed where we ended? And that's the, the, the joy of these podcasts. It really is. No. And that really is the end. So thank you so much, Matt, for giving so much of yourself to these two episodes. Um, it really has been fantastic. And uh, once again, you know, do look up Matt and uh, you can find more details about him if you go into the show notes um, on the on the podcast episode. That just leaves us to say thank you for listening today. And uh, we do hope you tune in for our next episode. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening today. We would like to thank our podcast sponsorship partners, TradeStation Global and the Society of Technical Analysis, the STA. You can find out more about our sponsors on our website, alpha-mind.net, or see the link in the episode description. TradeStation Global is a multi-asset trading platform with access to international markets where you can trade a range of instruments from one single account and leverage professional grade trading tools. Visit tradestation-international.com forward slash alpha mind to know more. The Society of Technical Analysts, the STA, provide well beaten technical analysis education programs. Alpha Mind podcast listeners can obtain a 10% discount off the cost of their excellent home study course. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, we'd appreciate it if you could leave a friendly review or provide a rating for the show on whichever podcast service you use. You can find out more about us at our website, alpha-mind.net. You can follow us on Twitter at alphamind101 and at alphamind102. And you can connect with me, Stephen Goldstein, and my co-host, Mark Randall, on LinkedIn. You can also follow us and can check back over some of our past episodes on the alphamindpodcast.com. We wish you the best of luck in the markets. Have a good week.